What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about ASAP and ASAP Rocky, the God Hour. Really awesome video using some uh, neural network effects that we're going to talk about. Uh, a couple of different ways where you can pull something like this off, where you can use Adobe Premiere and After Effects to take these altered clips and um, make different effects out of them. Like you'll see, we'll talk a tiny bit about um, some other little things that happen within here. Super cool video, very psychedelic. So let's dive right into it. If you guys are new here, consider subscribing, slap a like on the video if you do enjoy to help the video with the YouTube algorithm and comment down below anything you'd like to see next. Also, please excuse all of these different tabs. Um, these are all things that I'd like to talk about quickly before we do go through here. So let's go through and just give you a tiny little uh, run through of the video. I'm not gonna spend too much time, but let's talk about some of the stuff. So this beginning sequence here, you can do something very easy in terms of going through a tunnel or creating any type of uh, 3D tunnel using trap code Tau by Red Giant uh, in Adobe After Effects. There's a bunch of tutorials out there. I'm going to link one below because it's a much better tutorial if you're trying to do that specific thing as opposed to trying to show it to you in this video. Here's a little example of what I've done before doing the exact same process in this uh, Riff Raff music video that I made a couple of years back. So you can do something like that in Tau, where you can put in all the wires, you can change the camera path, et cetera, et cetera. But I want to zoom forward here because this is the main effect that's happening throughout the music video. This kind of trippy, crazy looking style change that you see here. And they use this in a couple of different ways. Sometimes it's just popping up in the corners of the video. Uh, I like how it matches with all the colors. And sometimes they actually go through and use it in different creative ways. So we're going to talk about two different methods, two different tools that you can use to create this crazy psychedelic look that you're seeing here. I'm going to call method one the easy method, my favorite method. This is a method that I've actually talked about um, before in this tutorial I created um, almost a year ago. And as you can see, the style is very similar. Obviously, you can choose different styles, but the way it's applied is very similar, where there's not too much jumping around, but you're still getting this crazy sort of psychedelic look. Very, very similar to what you see here. Now, the second tool that I'm going to talk about, and I'm going to call this the experimental method. This is something that you can really dive into if you want to create something new using some of these Google Collab notebooks. These are basically easy to use pre-packaged code that you can run. You don't have to know how to code and you can create some really amazing things. So let's talk quickly about that and then we'll hop in and show you my easier EBSynth method. So starting off, I want to show you uh, some examples of what you can do with what I'm going to show you. There's entire Reddit communities where they talk about different experiments using these AI tools which are available. I'm going to link a bunch of them down below. And there's a lot you can do with it. For one, you can type in different prompts into these Google Collab Deep Dream notebooks here. These collab notebooks are essentially shared code where you can utilize computing power that isn't your own to produce images, videos, or whatever. The code is actually condensed where if you see if I click show code, you can see all of the you can see all of the ins and outs. You don't actually have to know any coding to be able to use these and mess around with these. All you have to do is read the tutorial and just click play to start running the code that's already in place. You can type in any text prompt and the AI will generate an image that's following that prompt. So it's really cool. It can generate art for you in different styles depending on the different collab notebooks you use. And you can even type in um, draw this in the style of this artist and it'll do its best to try and replicate that. So here's some things I was able to create using this method. And I just want to introduce you to this. So this is one tool you can use these Google collab notebooks. And the awesome thing about this, there's tons of these different ones utilizing different systems where you can get different AI results. So that's one tool for being able to create images like this, where you're taking one specific style um, and you're using AI to, to apply that style onto your video clips. I'm also going to link this below 12 Google Collab Notebooks that matter, talking about StyleGAN, GPT, GPT-2, Style Transfer. These are all different types of AI systems which can produce different things. So you have the standard Google Deep Dream that we've talked about in the past using TensorFlow. You guys, of course, can look through some of these other ones um, and experiment with them. Again, we're going to take you through using the Google Collabs in a little bit. So really cool things with Google Collab Notebooks. I think it's a very important tool. Keep in mind, you're using somebody else's work here. So make sure you are crediting. Starting with method number one, what we're going to do is hop into After Effects and just import in a video. So I got this from Pexels.com. If you want some royalty free footage to mess around with and link will be down below. What we're going to do is export this clip as a PNG sequence. So we'll go up to file, export, 
add to render queue. Then over here where it says output module, we're gonna click that. We're gonna change the format from AVI to PNG sequence. So it's gonna render out each frame in the video as an individual image. So wherever it says output to, you need to click there. And you want to make a folder here for where it's going to export all those PNG images. Cause again, there's gonna be a lot. So we'll go to new folder, PNG, something like that. Double click in the folder and then we'll just click save and then render. Once you have your PNG sequence in a folder, your next objective is to take the first frame of that folder and apply some creative style onto it. I like to use deepdreamgenerator.com. You can also even use Photoshop. The newer versions of Photoshop have built-in neural filters, which you can test out and try if you'd like. But Deep Dream Generator has normal style transfer, custom style transfer, and the crazier Deep Dream psychedelic look. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that one. I'll just go to the site, upload my first frame from my PNG sequence, choose my settings that I like, and then process my image. Also note here, if I'm going a little bit too fast for you, I made a full tutorial on this specific thing, so I'll leave that step-by-step -step guide down below if you guys are just interested in this method. Once you have your processed image from Deep Dream Generator or any other or any other style transfer website, you can now use a free software called EBSynth to apply that custom style to the rest of your video. All you need to do is download and fire up EBSynth, Again, 100% free. Wherever it says keyframes, go ahead and click select and select the image that you just processed from Deep Dream Generator. Wherever it says video here, you want to select the folder that has your PNG sequence and just select the first one and click okay. And then we want to create a new output folder and designate that. So where it says output folder, we'll click make a new folder and I'll just name this output. So once you've done that easy setup, you can just go ahead and click synth and EB synth will start applying the style from the first keyframe clip that you designated to the rest of the video. All right guys, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop EB synth here just because this process for some of these shots can sometimes take a while. There's a lot of different things I wanna cover here. But as you can see in my output folder that we set up, we have all of these frames that we generated with that style transfer. So you can open up Adobe Premiere or After Effects and you can import that PNG sequence back in as a video. In Premiere, I can create a new sequence and then I can go up to File, import and you see here where it says check on image sequence all i have to do is navigate to wherever i exported that final from ebsynth and check on image sequence so i can click open and drag it in here and of course let's right click and scale this to frame size you guys can see what we're working with here with that style transfer let me go in and drag in the original but let's just drag this in and i want to give you guys some tips here that they used in the original video that will allow you to mess with this style transfer so first off if you select the clip, you wanna place your style transfer clip in a video layer above your normal clip underneath once you have that process version. And on your style transfer clip, you can go up to your effect controls in the top left and you can change around your blending mode. So if you wanted to mix a bit more with the scene, that way it's not all stylistic. And of course, if you select that clip and go into your uh, color workspace here, over on the right with this Lumetri color panel open, you guys can color grade the stylized clips. You can make anything pop out more shadows, highlights. So mess around with these different values to get different results. If you guys do want to get this cool little trippy blend going on, it doesn't always have to straight be um, all like this. And this is just a random style that I picked. You could go for the crazier, the crazier deep dream version which I did with this one. And as you can see, here's the results of that. Other things you can do that you saw in that music video, you guys can use masking. So say for example, you wanna only have this crazy pattern that we applied uh, coming in through the window. So you can put it into something like vivid light, and then you can select the clip. You can go up to opacity again in your effect controls. And you can just grab your pen tool and uh, kind of create a little mask here wherever there's these beams of light and you have this rough edge. So you're going to want to go to your mask feather, bump that up a tiny bit. And then if you want it to fall along with the footage, you can keyframe your mask path. So click here and you can just drag a bit and adjust. So a cool way to use those interesting, crazy styles in subtle ways or in ways where it's only affecting certain areas. You want to still have that trippy look. So endless possibilities. And speaking of endless possibilities, I wanna end off this tutorial by talking about some of these different Deep Dream or Google Collab 
coding things. So I'm going to show you how to run one of these. I'm not going to go through and do the full thing because again, uh, the style transfer can take a lot of time. These are effects where I recommend you pick a longer clip, let it run overnight. That way you have the style transfer version tomorrow and you can just cut in, do the adjustments, edit in whatever you'd like. All right guys, so the main two Google Collab notebooks I'm gonna be showing here, it's gonna be this one. This is the normal VQGAN and clip quantize method. Um, again, it gets a little mumbo jumbo-ish, but it's pretty easy to use these. This one is only going to style transfer an image or deep dream an image. Whereas this one here is an altered version. I'll leave this below as well, made by Datamosh or Danny Perry. And this one is actually batch imaging. So you can import a video in here if you follow along with them and it shows you how to mount your Google Drive, do all that, split the video into images, batch the images so it's gonna deep dream each one. So you can choose which one you'd like to pick if you want to generate videos. This one will take longer, the batch one, or if you'd like to use my first method I already showed you, just deep dream the first frame in your PNG sequence, you can just use this one. So let me first show you how to use this one. And then again, if you want to, you can use this one and create full videos out of it. So to use these Google Deep Dream um, collab notebooks, it's actually very simple. This is utilizing a third party GPU. So it's not your own computer processing this. It's kind of like a remote render, which is amazing. So first off, we can click this little arrow here to check the GPU type. So make sure that everything is running correctly. So you get a little check mark here, meaning that that cell is complete. So that's good. Auto disconnect from Google Lab. This doesn't matter. This is only if you're processing for more than like 12 hours. Installation of libraries. This one will take a while because you're downloading a bunch of different things. Under here, selection of models to download. These are different databases of images that it's going to source from. Sometimes if you source from different databases, you can get different stylistic results. So keep that in mind. Scroll down here, parameters, you can type in a text prompt. So you can type in what you want your image to look like and it'll try and process it based on your text prompt. That's the amazingness. That's the amazingness of these Google collabs. You can literally write anything here. I could write ASAP Rocky LSD trippy Google Deep Dream. I could even type in in the style of a specific famous artist out there and it's gonna try and replicate it in that style. And let's go back up here and start actually running some of these cells. So again, first we need to install the libraries. We'll go ahead and click that and we'll go ahead and let that install. All right, so libraries are installed. You can see by that green check. Let's go ahead and again, we'll just keep the model um, database here at default and we'll click this little uh, run cell. You wanna pay attention in your parameters to the height and width. If for some reason you're getting an error, it may just be because there's not enough memory to process such large files. So keep that in mind here. Also keep in mind, if we were to just to run this how it is, it's going to generate an image from scratch based off the text prompt that we added in here. So if you want to add an initial image, you can see it has some info here. If you wanna use an initial image to the model, just upload it to the collab environment and change initial image, putting the exact name of the file. So right here where it says initial image, we're gonna go ahead and click this upload. If you're not seeing that, you want to again click this little file here, click upload and load in whatever initial image you want. So we can go to our PNG sequence that we exported. And I've been exporting a few of these just to experiment. Um, let's try this one here, this astronaut. So we'll click this first. Before we click open again, it wants the image name. So we'll just grab the file name, right click and copy it and we'll open it. So this will open here and right here you see it. So we can go to initial image and paste the name that we have here. Make sure you put .png. Go ahead and fire up the cell for the parameters and then fire up the AI. And check it out guys, the AI is now running. So as I hold this here, you're gonna see the more iterations, the more crazy it's gonna get. Iterations are set to negative one. So this is just gonna keep running and running until I stop it. And of course, if you wanna use that first method with this AI uh, distortion tool, where you use EV synth to apply it, um, to all the different frames. You can use your crazy text prompt here. You can save this image and then you can load it straight into EBSynth. So again, you don't have to generate the full video. You can generate just the image, or again, you can use this link to do the batch imaging and generate a full video out of it. If you wanna get crazy with it, see here after 50, here's the next part, and it just starts going completely insane. So maybe do some different tests uh, with your with your text prompt here, with the different uh, database that you're using. Experiment with it, you can get some pretty cool stuff.
All right, guys, so I hope you did enjoy. I do hope you take some interest in some of those Google Collab notebooks because, again, you can create some really crazy stuff. It does take a while to process long videos because it's processing each and every image. But again, you can get some insane results like this that you see here. So if you want to see a tutorial on any of the specific uh, Google Collab notebooks that I linked below, let me know in the comments. Other than that, I hope you did enjoy. It's crazy what you can do with um, AI-powered neural networks. And I think we're going to see a lot more of this type of technology in music videos as we move forward. So if you did enjoy, slap a like on the video. It means a huge amount to me. Subscribe if you guys want to see more. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting. And I'll see you in the next one.